Hey, what's up everybody? Raw Assassin is back again with another video. Um, this time is not going to be a TL video because TL unfortunately is not going to be going on the maintenance today and posting the new patch notes. Uh, I don't know, not sure why they moved it to Thursday. And tomorrow we got a closed beta of an NA version of the game. So we'll be doing that as well. But for today, you know, since I'm home today, I'm not working. I decided to do a reaction on this video by force gaming uh, and the title is every new mmo you can play in 2024 so yeah uh, don't forget to subscribe hit the bell notification comment share the video and all that and you know without further ado let's just jump in the video see what he gotta say about these projects but i understand it can so i got a lot of comments in the last video people tired of me talking about mmos that are 10 years away from release and you know what i get it yeah, for real, because, you know, those hour-long videos with the games that have no date or anything, it's kind of, like, pointless, you know, to cover them. That, uh, I like learning and talking about these projects, but I understand it can be a bit of a drag, uh, knowing many of them are at least half a decade away. So let's talk about the MMOs coming out. Also, because we've been hearing about, like, Ashes of Creation, we've been talking about that game for how many years? At this point, like... I don't even want to see like new f new footage or nothing. I just want to know when the game is going to be ready finally. Right now. Today's video will focus entirely on new MMOs scheduled to launch. It's our in favorite TL. We did a similar one earlier in the year, but since then Still. timelines have shifted. Some games got pushed out, others moved up, and we've had a few new surprises as well. So 2024's new MMOs, what are they? When can you play them? And do we expect any of them to be any good? Which will probably depend on your definition. I'm going to tell you there's one game right now already. It's Throne of Liberty, and is good, and it has uh, the most potential to be better out of everything else that's on the market supposed to come out. Excuse me. Of good. So, all right, as of this recording, we actually have eight MMOs scheduled to release in 2024. Now, I'm sure we won't actually get... Most likely, it's going to be four or five of them get all eight of them this year but this is That's what's what I'm on the docket and let's start off with the ones that i think have the best chance of actually hitting their target the one that appears actually most likely to launch the soonest believe it or not is taurus land this is the game that notoriously got its start in response to blizzard pulling world of warcraft out of china they said the chinese we'll wow. make our own wow and that appears to be precisely what they have done not to say that this is a direct one i'm gonna tell you right now guys um if you want to play an mmo on your phone this is probably going to be the best bet, the best game to go with, you know, and it's worth waiting. But if you're going to be playing on PC, don't even, like, you know, if you're saying that Tron and Liberty is trash, I don't know what to say, and wait on this game, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> one copy because it's not but boy you can I mean look how old and outdated this that looks. aside though it is a new MMO and it's launching very soon just the other week on their official discord they posted this announcement Taurus Land is nearing its official release and pre-registration is available now on the Google Play Store Apple App Store and our official website now currently we see an expected launch date listed as June 23rd although they I may just get this on the phone you know when I'm out of the house or whatever like when I can't play on the PC just to run this and have some fun. I have said that that is not set in stone. It does give us a rough timeline. It is also coincidentally the only actual listed date we have for any of these games on this list. Everything else is pretty much just a target okay. year and target quarter that's listed without any ha having an actual official launch day and month. Like this would be cool 10 years ago probably on the PC, you know? So yes, Taurus Land does appear like it is the most concrete launch date that we have at... Not even, because you already had like arcades and stuff, you know. BDO is like almost 10, I think, if not 10 already. The moment. Now in terms of my expectations, well, I've heard okay, but not phenomenal things from the early testing. None of the impressions that I've seen have come away super enthused about the game. It does appear to be a fairly by the numbers theme park MMO with the typical offerings. You'll follow a main story quest, level up through different zones, doing dungeons along the way. Dungeon oh, that's what I'm saying. This looks like on mobile, this will be the best MMO to play, but on a PC, like nobody needs this on a PC at all. I mean, if you're saying that Throne of Liberty uh, combat is bad, just look at this one. At least Throne of Liberty has fluid combat, you know, top targeting, but fluid. This looks like Oh. Gens are as you this expect them. Uh, clear through enemies, fight a boss, and collect loot. These come in multiple difficulties. There are Again, ten-person raids, mobile, this world bosses, cool. daily quests, solo tower climbs, PvP battlegrounds, and 
Yeah, everything that's in TL besides the battlegrounds. And arenas. Now, those are the general content types, but overall, again, I've not heard terribly great things, unfortunately. It seems like the combat isn't very good. It feels floaty and not that impactful. It very, and very slow, too. Much so looks and feels like a mobile game that's getting ported to PC because, well, that's what it is. I think it's no coincidence that they listed the uh, mobile stores before they listed the website PC version of the game in their announcement. And the game is cross-platform for mobile and PC, so you will be playing with mobile users. And I've heard complaints about this as well, being that they don't communicate very well because they're on a phone and they don't do mechanics either. Pay to win. Well, yeah, because, you know, on the phone... It's like a bigger market and more people have phones, so the chances that you're playing with somebody who's old or like who never played the video game, especially an MMO, is like very high, you know? That's, that's the thing about the mobile market. It's, it's so many noobs. <laughs> it also looks to be a guarantee, despite what the developer has said. It's got an energy system tied to crafting. The game uses the typical two-currency model. I remember them too saying there's going to be no pay to win, no cash up, nothing, but see... I think after all the tests, they realized that, like, this game is not going to be, you know, it can't compete with TL on PC and stuff like that, you know, so they're just going to switch it up and try to juice it as much as they can from the mobile players, because nobody's going to be playing this on PC, guys, unless they, you know, have very, very weak PC, like, Tron and Liberty is around the corner, why would you play this? It's silver robot. It's a very bad timing for them to release this game. Ordered from doing quest achievements, dailies and weeklies, and used to buy stuff in the game from vendors. But then there is gold, the currency used solely for buying items from the player auction house. And while there are a few ways to see, they took the same the same system from TL from Albion with the auction collect gold in the game you can also buy it from the cash shop and that appears to be the best way even from the beta it appears like the amount of gold that you own will be the have the biggest impact on your overall power progression they were also selling monthly subscriptions with boost rewards think along the same lines of what they do in eso or in lost ark they were selling those in the closed beta test for a beta selling monthly subscriptions they couldn't even wait to hit us with the microtransactions until this is crazy the game early. but i think if you I think they only did it like, you know, if you spend money in beta, this will guarantee transfer on live. On live. There's no way it's not, it's not going to transfer on your starting balance. No way. At least they started in the beta. I mean, look, none of this is surprising or even that unusual from many Eastern MMOs, but it is funny given that early on, Taurus Land was advertising the game. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with beta, you know, and you have your cash shop running and everything. Like, as long as it transfers... As long as your money is spent, they're going to transfer on live. Like, ain't nothing wrong with that, you know? You're basically testing the full game, how it's going to be with pay to win right from the beta. What's wrong with that? By saying very upfront, it's going to be a non-pay to win MMO. That line was in every video description. They're so I remember that. He's not lying socials, website, everywhere, but it is clearly going to very much so be yet another pay-to-win MMO. Of course. But you know what? The game isn't out yet, and I will reserve final judgment until actually playing through and experiencing it. I mean, you already know the final judgment is a phone game. If you don't have anything to play or if you have a lot of time you spend it on the phone, play this game. It's going to be fun. Myself, but yes, it does seem like we're getting another <coughs> run-of-the-mill Eastern MMO loaded with progression tied to the cash shop. Not At least it doesn't have autoplay. Not to single out Taurus Land, though, because there's a few games on this list that fill that exact description. But Taurus Land also, from what I've heard, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a particularly good game. But again, I will reserve judgment until actually having played it. Hmm. Oops, sorry. Yeah. I don't have YouTube Premium. <laughs> Yeah, the next MMO that looks to be almost certainly coming out this year is Once Human. They've been steadily oh. ramping up testing for the game, holding a month-long beta back in December. I don't think I've heard about this game. currently underway, running from now up through middle of May. The game is scheduled to launch in the third quarter of this year, which would put it sometime between July and September. Although this is not a traditional MMORPG, it does check enough of the boxes. Yeah, it's kind of the, Tom Co the Division, right? But with monsters, this shit looks epic, though. This shit looks like I would play it. It is of personal interest to me that I wanted to include it here. This is Hell an open yeah. world third person looter shooter that caught my attention as it feels like a mix of The Division, Defiance, and Secret Worlds. Yeah, it's very interesting. Oh, look at this boss. All games that I personally really enjoyed in the past. You've got an open world with heavy... Damn, I think it's cool as long as the world is dope and you have PvP as well. This looks nice.
sci-fi theming full of otherworldly enemies and set pieces with all of the usual activities found in the Damn. genre. You'll go around doing PvE stuff, fighting enemies and bosses, collecting materials and loot. As you explore, you'll stumble across a variety of points of interest and content. There are strongholds, which are like the primary form of PvE activity while you level up. The various set locations all around the map full of enemies and objectives nice. to clear. I like a fair it. bit of puzzle and riddle solving mixed in, which beyond the sci-fi theming, this part in particular really reminded me of Secret World. Uh, world events include things like bosses that roam around. There's oh, wow. a spider bus, houses with legs and space whales. There's King of the Hill style horde modes and then all sorts of uh, events tied to unique locations. There are dungeons called silos. You move through clearing. Oh, it looks amazing. Tell me if there's PvP. Enemies fighting a boss at the end for loot. And then there are large instance boss fights referred to as monoliths. These are separate from the dungeon there's bosses a... and tend to be more difficult and include and several nice. phases <laughs> with more valuable TL, rewards. Beyond that, spider. the world is full of small camps of enemies, all sorts oh, of points of cool. interest, cool. uh, NPC towns with vendors and side quests. There's the also PvE a variety like of PvP oh, from see? points PvP of interest nice. that turn contested, letting you oh, fight other yeah. players. Two entire servers that, if you choose to play on, will be full-on PvP with oh, base really? attack and defense mechanics as well. And then in addition to all of those MMO and looter shooter things, the game also has a lot of survival elements. I gotta look into it once human. That's interesting. Like stamina, sanity, hydration, and hunger meters to maintain. I typically don't like the shooting games, but it's like those shooting RPG like Borderlands style. And full on base building with as much variety as any survival the game. The division, yeah. yeah. This looks nice. These bases can be built pretty much anywhere except for roads and right near points of interest. You're gonna see- Damn, you can build your base player built bases all over the place in the open world. The game's also got plenty of progression available. Besides the leveling up, you've got crafting of gear and mods along with blueprints or cradle and deviations that provide all nice. sorts of perks and special powers. And it's in a mm. few of these crafting and progression systems where the possibility of future pay to win seems like it might exist, although it's currently not in the beta version of the game. Man, it's okay. Like everything is pay to win in this world at this point. Like as long as i can enjoy the game at this point is like whatever I'm not trying to compete for being top one percent whatever player base you know just make the game good if it's pay to win whatever as long if it, even if it takes me like some time you know to get to do certain stuff as long as i can enjoy the game fuck it man just make it pay to win at this point it's like everything is pay to win Game. It could make its way at some point and launch or sometime after release. The possibility is there, especially with the huge number of currencies and resources in the game that gate power pro progression. Although the developer has very adamantly said on many occasions there will be no pay to win, that might also depend on their definition of the term. It is certainly the case where they could at a moment's notice swap over. Uh, anytime I play a game that- Bro, every developer is going to tell you that. Of course they're going to tell you that. They're going to attract many people that may the most they can decides to have like 50 different currencies in it tied to all sorts of different activities and progression and thousands and thousands of menus for you to click through to uh, obtain those currencies uh, that sets off alarm bells almost immediately i mean there's even already in-game gotcha mechanics that are tied to the highest rarity blueprints so yeah we will see what happens if pay to win in any variation ever comes into once human i do quite like the video game portion of the game though like once human is fun to play it's filled with interesting content and that's why i have been playing it Wait, once more yes a current round of beta testing is taking place. It started on April 5th and is said to be running right up through the middle of May, a little over a month long. There do appear to be plenty of opportunities to get in if you're interested in checking it out for oh, yourself. Yeah, I gotta the look full it up release right version is scheduled Damn. for the third quarter in 2024. Damn, Next up, we've got Throne nice. and Liberty. So this one also seems the best game seems certain to release this year. We're just not exactly sure as of yet when, but it is already out in Korea as of last December and the global launch is planned for some point this year. So closed beta testing of the global version is actually starting this week. It's gonna be fairly brief beginning on Wednesday, April 14th and lasting until the 17th. This is a confidential test and will be under NDA. So don't expect no to see why any streams or it. videos. But again, the game has already launched in Korea and we're not expecting a whole lot to change beyond localization and maybe a final <sighs> Oh, maybe they're going to show us something content new. content should pretty much be exactly the same. So Throne of Liberty is yeah. a more traditional theme park MMO. It's got a massive seamless open world with no loading screens and tons of players. I have seen clips with easily one to 200 people in a single area. Are you crazy? We've very seen people with like to a thousand with people traversal in the same mechanics area. that really reward that like exploration. You've got the ability to glide, a grapple hook, and mantling onto most of the terrain. There's the typical assortment of MMO quests and activities, open world public events for both PvE and PvP 
a few varieties of dungeons, including open world dungeons that can house any number of players, and traditional instant dungeons for groups of up to six. There are 15 field bosses located throughout the open world, solo boss tower climbs, there's open world PvP where certain zones become Man, flagged honestly, if over you, like, time. A big focus on- If you're into like medieval fantasy MMOs, like it's nothing else that's better than this right now, I promise you, like I guarantee you. Guild play in this as well. It's pretty much required actually for much of the higher tier content in both PvE and PvP. And uh, plenty of progression systems and reward tracks from leveling and gear enchanting, a battle pass and codex system, login rewards, and those guild rewards. There's a lot of different things to work towards and spend your time doing. Now, as mentioned, the Korean version of the game launched last December and was met with pretty much the reception we expected. The game itself seems good, the combat has improved, and it's got a lot of interesting and content to do but also it is super pay to win well surprise surprise they oh my god please stop it guys i hate when the streamers who don't play the game you know make this conclusions and stuff the game is not super pay to win it's way pay less pay to win than lost ark or bdo or even lineage at the time like or essence right now stop listening to these youtubers Deja vu here. Uh, there are some parts of the progression that can't be swiped for, but many of them can. Like most free to play MMOs, Throne in Liberty does. But why don't you mention the price for this swiping? Because the price of getting top boss equipment and all this and that fully enchanted is very high. And the equipment gets better and better. With like two star dungeons, introduce new equipment to, to pay to win for that is gonna, you know, drain your whole. I, don't, I mean, I, I get it. There's people who make a shitload of money and they're able to spend, but uh, when people say pay to win, I feel like they should be mentioning that also like how much is going to cost you to have the best equipment, you know, because one thing is if you spend a thousand dollars and you're fully geared and another thing when when it takes you like 20, 30,000 to get the best equipment in the game, it's a completely different type of money, you know, and different type of pay to win. And I'm not gonna lie, guys. I've been playing the game for four months. Not even I haven't bought a single battle pass, a single dollar spent. Still fun, still amazing. You can still PvP and do everything. Have two currencies: the Solent, the earned in-game currency, and then Lucent, the purchased one with <sighs> no money. Now, Lucent can technically be farmed in-game by not spending, in the sense that you can find items and then post them on the auction house. Damn, that's crazy. How old is this video? Because all these items look so expensive on the marketplace. It's got to be like months, months old. In exchange for Lucent that other players purchased. However you get Lucent though, you'll be able to purchase nearly everything in the game with it. And that is where the pay to win comes in. The two main things that people want to buy with the premium currency is the base level versions of gear. But more importantly, the materials used to upgrade and enhance that gear, including even being able to purchase the in-game currency Solent. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very old very by breaking down items that you purchase footage. with Lucent. As of today, it seems like even the biggest, most ardent fans of Throne of Liberty in Korea admit that it is without a doubt a very pay-to-win game. I mean, it is pay-to-win, just like every other game, but it's way less pay-to-win, for example, the BDO. Let's be honest, you don't need to monthly put money into the game. Yes, here in it, but the game, there's no subscriptions that you have to purchase. You know, some buff camps that you need to be so you can carry most i don't know like there's no need to pay to win yes you can pay to win you know to progress a little faster or buy some stuff but you can also but there's no need to pay you know for no subscriptions anything like that I'm telling you four months even without the battle pass i was doing fine having fun everything is good but they still enjoy it despite it, which is a growing trend in the genre with but a rare few exceptions. Personally, I am looking forward to the content and playing the game, spending time exploring the world, checking out everything it has to offer. But unless drastic changes are made, I suspect I will be leaving before. But what drastic changes? What drastic changes do you expect them to shut down the auction house are not too long once my gear progression being gated behind either weeks or uh, weeks of grinding or seconds worth of swiping that is when i am most certainly likely to check out throwing liberty global does it here you see like that's that's the problem guys because if you want to get everything within a week or two you know top gear so what's there to aim for that's what i'm saying 
the only way you're gonna get seconds of swiping if you're ready to spend 30 40 i don't know twenty thousand dollars right away how many people are gonna do that compared to the general population of the game it's like you're not gonna be number one anyway most likely not it's gonna be so many people and if you want to be number one you know if you're gonna be playing fucking 15 hours every day you don't need to swipe there's gonna be somebody in your group swiping and your clan swiping you know you're gonna have enough hours to put in to get everything appear to be on track for release yeah don't listen to this youtubers you know streamers talking about pay to win you can enjoy the game without pay to win trust me sometime later this year oops another one the next game on the list might not meet many of your qualifications for an MMO, but the developer themselves are calling it one. I'm talking about Dune Awakening. This is described as an open world survival. I've never seen the footage. I, I know it's been going around a lot about this game, but I haven't checked anything, any info on the game at all sandbox MMO. Developed by Funcom, who have said that they are looking to take the past 20 years of experience in both of these genres and bring them together. There will be a heavy survival focus, the usual loop of starting with nothing, venturing out, gathering basic resources to craft basic tools, to build basic crafting stations that let you progress to the next tier to gather better resources and make better tools for better stations, so on and so on. There's base building with all the usual offerings. They've taken the foundation of their prior game, Conan Exiles, and added and expanded upon it. There's even vehicle construction. In fact, vehicles are going to play a fairly large role in the game as you have to use them to traverse the sands and avoid other players as well as the sandworms. As per the Dune universe, sandworms are a constant threat and have been implemented to act as a tension mechanic, forcing players to think about their actions for fear of drawing their attention. If you make too much noise, if you move too much across the sand. If Man, I wish Dune had lightsabers like Star Wars, some, some melee type weapons. I assume this is all going to be shooting. If you drive large vehicles for too long, the worms will inevitably arrive, and you can't defeat them, you must only run from them. Combat itself will be in third person, it's an action shooter game, you'll pick from a wide array of crafted weapons, gadgets, vehicles, gear, and abilities from the different great schools of the Imperium, which are basically your class selection. This will be tied into progression, leveling your character, unlocking new abilities for the different classes as you progress. As for the MMO elements, for one, they have said servers will support thousands of players simultaneously. Okay. That's features good. an end game that centers Hope, hopefully better than new world around large-scale combat what they are calling combined arms oh, by saying it's thousands it doesn't mean like a thousand five hundred but like two thousand people with groups of players split into factions fighting for resources in all out ground and air warfare from what they have shown and said this does appear to be similar to the sort of experience you get from battlefield or planet side style of large-scale combat there oh this actually might be cool there are also NPC bases called outposts for you to scout, infiltrate, and clear. World events like ships falling from the sky full of valuable resources to be scavenged or large military vessels that scan the planet at night that you have to avoid. Beyond various camps and other points of interest, you also have straight up dungeons in the game called Echo Labs full of enemies and bosses. Sometimes you'll even find interesting experiments, puzzles, and obstacles to overcome. The world will be divided into sections with safe and hostile regions. Looks promising, just wish we had more gameplay. In those hostile areas, you'll find the most valuable resources and loot, but also there is full-on PvP, which includes friendly fire. And then there are some specific areas of the game that are subject to what are called the shifting sands mechanic, where once a week, sandstorms roll through and completely change the landscape, wiping out player outposts, revealing new points of interest and resource locations. This is actually a really cool sounding feature. I do quite like what we've learned about Dune Awakening so far, although I do want to mention there has as of yet been no public NDA free testing, so I have not seen or read any first on impression. Exactly, see no footage, nothing, just videos, like barely any footage on the mount and stuff. No PvP um, reviews, no nothing, so it's hard to form any type of opinion. That said, they are targeting a 2024 early access release. That's what I'm also saying, how it's kind of hard, you know, there's no footage, half a year late, uh, left. I feel like this one is going to be delayed. Release, and it does seem like they're on track. In fact, a few weeks ago, I got a hands-off presentation, and what I saw looked pretty good. Now, it was hands-off, which it means I wasn't playing the game. I've not played the game, but I did see gameplay. I saw the game running in action, okay. and I did like what I saw, but 
again, it's not quite the same as playing yourself. So we have to wait until that actually happens. Some cool ideas here though. I like the concept and I am looking forward to checking it out. Also, this is one of the few MMOs launching this year that doesn't appear primed to be full of pay to win on its release, which makes the, how do you know? <laughs> it a bit of a standout which is also pretty sad in it <laughs> uh, beta signups are available now testing is expected to start in the coming months and again the early access release but you know it's not going to be pay to win the game hasn't showed any footage you're talking about pay to win already is scheduled for later this year all right next up we've got pax day so this one is claiming for an early access release in the spring which in order for them to hit would have to be within the next few months here uh, this is an open world survival sandbox mmo with a massive focus on community in fact every building in the game will be player built the economy will be entirely player run there aren't even traditional mmo uh, npcs or quest givers in the game there are enemies to fight and such but there aren't npcs that you chat with to learn about the lore or, or to do quest for none of that this is a game that leans very heavily into the sand somebody really lazy made this game <laughs> and box camp of the genre now part like, i don't want to write no story to it have no npcs let them just play in a sandbox now, it could be interesting though if it's done right part of the reason i'm uncertain about this launch here is that the last test they held in november was pretty bare bones with just the fundamental that's what new world should have been mental originally of gathering crafting base building and very basic combat the game just didn't seem anywhere near complete enough for even an early access launch that said though it was intentionally limited that was the point specifically it was a yeah, bro, like the way this animations look oh my god designed to test those elements and in the five months since then they have seemingly made some good advances so maybe they do very well launch into early access soon in the spring as they are projecting in fact a recent post did a little breakdown of what they've worked on in the time since the last alpha they've revamped their rpg and stat systems from different types of damage to the introduction of durability mechanics they've also enhanced the depth and complexity of gameplay with spells special attacks and procs added to the game they've enhanced animations as well for weapons to try to ensure combat feels more impactful they've improved targeting for both melee and range and done some general balancing oh, for so items and enemy stats durability crafting and more also there is a second alpha test happening in a couple of weeks starting on april the 23rd whereas the f i don't know this just looks like worse than new world you know so i don't know i'm not excited for this at all first alpha focused on i feel like if it never comes out nobody will miss out on anything gathering and crafting and building this one is focused on the gameplay experience namely combat and pvp in alpha 2 we can expect to see a com i would really hate if this game's pvp system will be decent you know but then because the game looks like shit, so it would really suck to see a game you know that's made by the company with no resources that made the whole game better than new world like because new world you know had all the money the game looks pretty it's just the game sucks so it, it's always a bummer when you see a game that looks like shit but it's actually a good game like like albion for example you know like fucking albion with lost arcs graphic and lo like like, let's say Lost Ark with Albion's PvP would have been fucking crazy. Combat revamp with smarter and more formidable enemies. Improved targeting and spell mechanics. Combat should be more engaging in this build. They've done world enhancements from lighting and biome transitions to cave exploration. These improvements should enhance the overall atmosphere and immersion of the game, Show they flagging. said. There's the player versus player as they've introduced a full, completely PvP zone. And there's also expansions to crafting with new crafting stations, additional resources, and magical materials, along with expanded Yo, crafting you got an options invisible and bow. recipes. Now, the developer has said and magical material yo what is he holding Check there's also it. expansions to crafting with new crafting stations additional re resources yo where's the magic my bow got my boy got an invisible bow materials, along with expanded crafting options Shoot and an air from now, the developer pocket. has said that they plan to continuously improve the game leading into its early access release which again is slated to happen this spring and at this point i wouldn't be surprised if it happens but i also wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't happen depending on what sort of feedback they get from this second alpha test registration for alpha 2 Looks is still currently well. open you can sign up on their website with the testing beginning on april 23rd okay so those five games i think are the most likely to actually come out this year uh, which is why i went into a bit more depth and detail when discussing them the next three are also targeting a 2024 release uh, i'm just way less certain about them we're talking about blue protocol project lll and core punt they were saying blue protocol is supposed to come out in june 
y más práctico. So, yeah. But they might switch it with TL now because they need to release TL ASAP. This blue protocol is scheduled for 2024, but here's the... Like, TL actually has a chance of succeeding in the West and Europe, so they need to re release TL right now and protocol will have to probably wait until October. Thing. The global version of this game is being published by Amazon, who are also publishing Throne and Liberty. Now, at the moment, it seems like Throne and Liberty is their priority. They have been pushing it way more on social media and advertising. They've been actively announcing closed beta testing, whereas I've not heard a peep from Amazon about Blue Protocol in months. Nothing at all. In fact, their last uh, activity on the official Twitter account was in August 2023, And since then, it has been just nothing. Absolute crickets. Now, yeah, because nobody is really interested in Blue Protocol that much. They already know it failed in Japan or whatever. Since they're publishing both of these games and they're... Like, people say Tron of Liberty failed, but nevertheless, you see a lot of people still playing it. You see a lot of videos, PvP videos. This is definitely, you don't see that about Blue Protocol both MMOs, we do expect there to be a bit of a gap between the two so that they're not competing with themselves for a player base. And since as of yet, we don't have an exact release date for Throne in Liberty, and I expect them to at least have a couple of months Excuse of me. runway after announcing that, unless Throne in Liberty comes out like late summer, early fall, I I'm really not sure that Blue Protocol is going to make it out in this calendar year. But who knows, this could all change tomorrow. Amazon could all of a sudden come out and announce we're going to be launching Throne in Liberty in June or August, and then that would Would give them enough time for blue protocol to come out in the fall like that could happen as of now it hasn't and again it looks like they're giving priority to throne and liberty and blue protocol once again is being put on the back burner but we will see what happens anything could change project lll is also targeting a launch in 2024 well, i've seen videos about this game this game looks sick also like division type of game i think but when it comes to this game they've just been so tight-lipped it's really hard for me to judge uh, other than the gameplay presentation during last year's g-star event we i've not seen or heard any updates for this game sort of like once human this is going to be an open world looter shooter with some interesting looking ideas and we have done a couple of videos going in a bit more detail about it if you want to figure out those specifics but in general i'm pretty in the dark with this one i have not seen any info or yeah it's not coming out this year for sure details about beta testing taking place i've not I think it's an nc soft game too right not seen any hands-on impressions i've not even seen any leaks come out and that happens for basically any game that is getting actively tested you will see leaks on, t on online for people who just don't care about the ndas they will talk about them even if it's behind anonymous accounts and vaguely none of that has happened for project lll from what i've seen so far so for that reason it is very up in the air for me like it could come out this year it's not I coming just, out i've got no way to judge whether or not it's on progress or the likelihood of that happening no. but it, it could happen it's possible and then there is core punk a game that i am really rooting for bro if you're waiting on this game right now just go play league of legends i swear to god it's gonna be the same thing four but still <laughs> seems to have a very i already see haters talking shit long road ahead of it with development having slowed in recent years and the last alpha test showing that they still seem to have a ways to go uh, but they have been receptive to feedback it does appear like they are implementing good changes based on that feedback and there's another alpha plan for later bro this is lost arc already nobody needs this this is like 15 years late too this month and here we'll get to see uh, those recently made changes in action look how slow and clunky the combat is and then there's lost arc and i am hoping for the best i'm hoping for good progress i'm hoping for improvements because i do nah. still love the idea of an mmo that plays like a moba and i think it has potential i do think core punk has potential but as far as it getting a full release in 2024 that just still seems unlikely to me unless there are significantly unless there's just like significantly more game behind the curtain that they haven't shown revealed at all but yes i'm rooting for them i like the idea of core punk i do think there's some cool things about what they've shown and what i've played still think it needs a bit more time all right so So as of now, those are the eight MMOs with launches that are said to be happening this year. The first <laughs> half of which I think... I will say Tron of Liberty, Tarisland. Uh, what else was there? I can't tell. I don't know about Once Human, maybe. I haven't been paying attention. Once Human, maybe. And maybe Blue Protocol. Dune Awakening and Pax Day are not going to release.
think and seem Corp like Bunk, the most so. likely. Beyond that, there is a long, long list of other games Not that are year. coming until 2025 and beyond. Some of which, though, will be getting testing this year. Alpha and beta testing is expected to happen or currently happening. Their Soul Frame, which we might be getting some test of this year, they've said on several occasions that they plan to begin publicly testing the game. I think this is the game from the Warframe devs fairly early on in the process, even earlier than what they did with Warframe all the way back in 2013. Of course, Ashes of Creation is still trucking along. This game gets regular updates, but it is still in alpha testing with the alpha two testing planned to begin in quarter three of this year. So a full launch is most certainly not happening. Quinfall supposed I say Ashes of Creation 2026. Supposedly exists and is running tests right now. We'll see how that one. I'm interested about this one too. Kind of reminds of BDO and something. But I haven't seen footage like that. Pans out. And then there's all the other games. You know, we got like Chrono Odyssey. Arc yeah, maybe not a video, like maybe more New World. Age 2, Project Ragnarok, Into the Echo, and a handful of others that are in. Yeah, I know Chrono Odyssey. A lot of people are waiting on that one as well, even in my guild developments coming out at some point but don't look to be anywhere near release and then we've got those games that i've been talking about for what feels like a decade yeah, uh, pantheon cool. and camilla unchained mm. i just don't have much to say about those two games and it's really unfortunate for what started out all those years ago as promising projects and ideas just where they are today uh doesn't any longer feel all that promising and then beyond all of this uh we cannot of course forget while these are the new mmos that are coming out this year and on the horizon we have all the big ones that are getting expansions final fantasy 14 has its dawn trail expansion coming out i believe in the summer world of warcraft has the i might end it right now because there's not really much to talk about but yeah guys as you can see throne of liberty is the most uh promising game for the next two years at least so I'm gonna see I had a closed beta tomorrow and peace yeah and there will be a patch notes video coming out on Thursday hopefully Thursday or Friday I'll make it and there we'll talk about the closed beta and stuff and to, today later I'll probably probably stream a little bit uh Tron and Liberty on Korea gonna do the dungeons and stuff and thanks for watching yeah don't don't forget to subscribe hit the bell notifica notification share all that stuff I ain't gonna lie that video got me a little tired because there's nothing to be hyped about besides Tron and Liberty. And once human looking cool, I'm about to actually go look into how to sign up for test. Maybe check that game out too. But yeah, peace guys. I'm going to see you soon. Yeah.